one cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the good boat rag doll when they saw a huge gate right across the water. What's that, said Rosie? That is the house where the water wizard lives, said Jim. Will he let us in, said Rosie? Yes, said Jim, if we say the magic words. Say them, said Rosie, if you know them. Er, uh, abracadabra, London Zoo. No, that's not right. But they couldn't remember the magic words, so the water wizard would not let them through. Abracadabra, super glue. Open the gates and let us through. And the water wizard made a great gurgle wurgling and a swooshing and a sploshing, and he opened his gates and the boat went in. They said another spell. Argle bargle, pudding and pies. Water wizard, make us rise. The water went bubble, bubble, spuggle, sprug, and up went the boat, and up went Jim, and up went everything. Then the water wizard opened his back door and let them out again. We did it, said Rosie. We did it, said Jim. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along in the good boat rag doll when they came to a dark forest. In the middle of the forest sat the Frog King. It's horrid, said Rosie. Where have all the colours gone, said Jim. I've swallowed them, said the Frog King. Noggin, said Rosie, and she looked up. Look, she said. There was a band of colour going right across the sky. It's a rainbow, said Jim. They sailed their boat to the end of the rainbow. There, they found three pots of paint. A red pot, a blue pot, and a yellow pot. Now we can put the colours back in the world, said Rosie. But there are only three colours here, said Jim. We can make all the others if we mix them, said Rosie. You'll see. And she was right. Rosie and Jim painted their boat. Then they painted the grass, the trees, and the sky. And the Frog King was so cross that he went green all over. But he never swallowed the colours again. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the good boat rag doll. I'm so hungry, said Rosie. I could eat a house. And no sooner had she said it than there by the water was a house made of bread with cake windows and biscuit doors and chimneys. They ate it nearly all up. But they were still hungry. I could eat a tree, said Rosie. And there were some broccoli trees. And they gobbled them up. They were still hungry, so they ate some clouds for pudding. They'd eaten so much that they were too fat to walk. So they caught a train that was passing. They got off the train at the supermarket. But they were too full to do any shopping. So Duck brought them home in a shopping trolley. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were travelling on the good boat rag doll when they came to a big black hole in the side of the hill. We're not going in there, said Rosie. But they were. The boat didn't stop. It went chugging straight on into the darkness. 
Rosie and Jim were afraid. Ooh, said Rosie. What if we meet the dragon under the hill? Ooh, uh, said Jim. Ooh. They turned on the light on their boat and carried bravely on. Rosie saw a little dot of light in front of them. What's that, said Jim. It's the dragon's eye, said Rosie. But it wasn't. The little dot grew bigger and bigger. It turned into a hole like the one they had gone into. It was the end of the tunnel. And when they came out of it, at long last, there was no dragon at all. The sun was still shining, and everything was all right. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim came to a funny place. A notice said, coal mine. What's that, said Jim. I don't know, Fispot, said Rosie. Let's go and find out. They went into a tunnel under the ground. I feel like a rabbit, said Jim. Have I got furry ears? No, noggin, said Rosie. But you have a mucky face. <laughs> a wizard under the ground, he gave them a piece of magic stone. It's cold and mucky, said Rosie. And black, said Jim. It'll keep you warm on a frosty night, said the wizard. Never, said Jim. But they took it anyway. Then it was time to go home for tea. And when the black stone was safely in the stove, little fire demons came and danced on it and it made the boat lovely and warm. That wizard was right, said Rosie. Magic, said Jim. One fine day, Rosie and Jim were travelling along on the old rag doll when they saw a big wizzy thing far across the fields. There's a giant waving to us, said Rosie. Let's go and see, said Jim. It wasn't a giant, it was a windmill with great sails whizzing round and round. There was a man in it. The man in the wind, said Rosie. The man in the wind gave them a bag of flour. Mix it with water, he said, and make anything you like. They made a little house with chairs and tables. The house began to grow until it was so big that Rosie and Jim could go into the house and sit at the table. Let's have a party, said Jim. Duck came and brought his friends. There was a cow, a sheep, a dog and a cat. They were all hungry. What shall we eat, said Jim. Noggin, said Rosie. There's nothing in the cupboard. The cow at the walls, the sheep at the chairs, the cat at the chimney. It's all bread, Noggins, said Rosie. Soon there was only a pile of crumbs for the little birds that flew down. That's the end of our magic house, Fizzpot, said Rosie. Rosie and Jim went home to their boat. That was made of steel. No one could eat that. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll when they stopped to do some fishing. Got one! Jim had caught a little silvery fish. Hello, said the fish. I'm a magic fish. Would you like a wish? A packet of sausages, please, said Jim. Let me go, and you can have a packet of the best sausages, said the fish. Jim let the fish go. It swam quickly away. You noggin, said Rosie. It'll never come back, and we'll get no supper. But there on the table was a packet of sausages. But the sausages grew little legs, jumped off the table, and ran for their lives. Quick, shouted Rosie, after them. Rosie and Jim chased the sausages over a hill, round a corner and along a street, but they could not catch them. Stop, said Rosie. They're too fast for us. Look, said Jim. They were outside a big shop. They went into the shop and bought sausages and toffee yogurts. Then they went home and had such a feast. They never saw the magic fish again or the sausages with legs. I don't know where they ran to. One sunny day, 
Rosie and Jim couldn't see out of the windows of the old rag doll. They were all steamed up. It must be that kettle, said Rosie. When they wiped them clean, they saw something very strange. There was a waffle and a puffle and a cloud of smoke and a rumble, dumble, chuff a puff puff. What is it, said Rosie? A house on fire, said Jim. He's running away, said Rosie. A house on fire running away, said Jim. Houses don't run away, said Rosie, and so they don't. Then it's a witch's kettle, said Jim, and she's boiling people for her dinner. No, she's not nogging, said Rosie. They're having a good time and they're going for their holidays. You can see them waving and laughing. It's a train, said Rosie. A steam train, said Jim, laughing. We have a steamer of our own, said Rosie, but it doesn't run away. Fizzgogs put it on, so we can have a cup of tea, said Jim. Just what I need, said Rosie. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll. They were just having a glass of orange juice when the wind blew a big wave at their boat. It made it wobble a bit and Jim spilt orange juice all down his shirt. Give it a wash in the sink, said Rosie. It'll soon dry on a day like this. Jim hung his shirt out to dry, but the wind took hold of it. It blew and blew, harder and harder, and it blew their boat away. We're in a blowaway boat, said Jim. The wind blew their boat out of the water and into the sky. They were soon sailing amongst the clouds. They saw some cuckoos flying past and waved to them. We must be in cloud cuckoo land, said Rosie. Here's a fine mess you've gone and got us into. How are we going to get home again? Easy, said Jim. He went outside and took his shirt in. It's dry now, he said. Now there was no shirt to catch the wind, the boat sank back down into the water. That's better, said Rosie. They saw many more blow-away boats and waved to them, but they didn't blow into the sky like the rag doll. There must be something special about your shirt, said Rosie. Better take it to the laundrette next time. One sunny day. Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll when they met a young girl weaving at a loom. It went clitter-clatter, clitter-clatter all day long. What are you doing, said Jim. I'm weaving cloth for my stepmother's new dress, said the girl. Why are you looking so sad, said Rosie. Because it will never be ready on time. My loom goes so slowly, she'll be very angry and I'll be sent to bed with no dinner. We'll help, said Rosie. We know someone who can weave very, very fast, said Jim. Come with us. They went somewhere they'd been before on their boat. Midsummer weavers. There was a beautiful young woman with a loom that had an engine to make it go. She could weave cloth so fast, whizz, fizz, that it was done before you knew it. And her loom wove the stepmother's cloth whilst they all had a cup of coffee. Then they said, thank you very much to the kind young woman. How can we pay you, said Jim. You can put me in a story and make me famous, said the woman. That'll do for me. And so they did. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were tired of travelling on the old rag doll, so they went for a walk. I'm thirsty, said Rosie. They saw a duck drinking from the river. We can't drink that, said Jim. They saw a bee drinking from a flower. We can't drink that, said Rosie. They saw a cow drinking from its trough. We can't drink that, said Jim. It's got little fizzly things walking on it, said Rosie. Where can we have a drink? Mm, I can give you a drink, said the cow. I didn't know cows could talk, said Rosie. Mm, they can in stories, said the cow. Where can we get this drink, then, said Rosie. Please, said Jim. Mm, come with me, said the cow. They followed her across the field to a house where the farmer milked her. When he went out, the cow said, Help yourselves. Rosie and Jim found some cups and dipped them into the fresh milk. 
Mmm, lovely, said Rosie. Delicious, said Jim. Thanks, said Jim to the cow. Thank you, cow, said Rosie. That was super fizzy. Goodbye. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were going along on the old rag doll when their engine went puff, rug, cluggity, clug, and it just stopped. We are stuck, said Rosie. The water went bubble, 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 and a great, huge, enormous, gigantic thing came out. Help, shouted Rosie. Who are you, said Jim, picking up a rolled up newspaper. I'm the junk serpent, shouted the thing. I've bitten your boat, and now I want my dinner. The junk serpent swallowed the rag doll. How are we going to get out, said Jim. Give it the good rubbish, said Rosie, and be quick about it before it chews us up. So Jim shouted, let us out and we'll give you lots of good rubbish to eat. The junk serpent spat out the rag doll again. They fed it bags of the best rubbish. It crunched up the empty bottles. It chewed the newspapers. It swallowed the cans. They fed it every day. The junk serpent was happy now. When it laid its eggs, they hatched out into new paper to make nice new books, new bottles for the milkman, and the new cans for Rosie and Jim to have a cool drink on a hot day. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll when they came to a muddy place. They jumped in the mud. Squish, splish, splattery, splat. It's clay, said Rosie. Sticky, said Jim. I'm making a cup, said Rosie. Me too, said Jim. Their cups were all squishy, squashy. Splat, said Jim. Oh, dear, said Rosie. They met a gypsy. Making cups, she said. Put them in the fire. Oh, said Jim. In the fire, said Rosie, they'll burn away. You'll see, said the gypsy. They made new cups, and the gypsy made a little brick house for them with a fire all round it. That'll do it, she said. Come back tomorrow. They did. Now the fire was cold. Look, said the gypsy. Real cups, said Rosie. Give them a wash, said the gypsy. Not squishy, said Jim. Have a cup of tea, said the gypsy. Thanks, said Rosie. Thanks, said Jim. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on their boat when they came to a great garden. Let's go for a walk, said Rosie. So they did. They came to a maze. Can we go in, said Jim. Yes, said the man, but can you come out? Noggin, said Rosie. Of course we can. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Duck followed them. <laughs> the maze was a twisty, turny place. They went this way. They went that way. In and out and out and in. Backwards, forwards, up and down. But they couldn't find the way out. We are lost, said Jim. I want to go home to tea, said Rosie. We can't, said Jim. We are still lost. Noggin, said Rosie. Doug flew up over the maze. He looked down and saw the way out. Follow Duck, said Rosie. Quack, said Doug. Coming, said Jim. And we are home in time for tea. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were going along on the old rag doll when Rosie said, what's a birthday? I don't know, said Jim. Let's go and find out, said Rosie. So they went into the town to see if they could see a birthday. They saw birthday cards in a shop. They saw two birthday cakes, but they still didn't know what a birthday was. Let's ask that little girl, said Jim. Hello, Rosie and Jim, she said. 
What are you doing today? We're looking for a birthday, said Rosie. It's mine today, said the little girl. I'm four. Come to my party. So they did. They had a lovely time. We don't know when our birthday is, said Rosie and Jim sadly. Well, you can have it today, like me. And Fizzgog, said Jim. And Duck, said Rosie. Quack, quack. Thanks, said Jim. Goodbye. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were travelling along on the old rag doll when they came to a fair by the river. I want to ride on the dragon, said Rosie. They gobble people up, said Jim. Fistpot, said Rosie. It's only a painted dragon. It can't eat anyone. So they went for a ride on the dragon. But they didn't see the dragon's eye winking as they got on. And they didn't see the dragon's wings stirring and its feathers ruffling in the breeze as the ride began to move up the first steep slope of the switchback. When it came to the top, instead of swooping down the other side, it spread its wings and flew away up into the sky, taking Rosie and Jim with it. Hold tight, called Rosie, as they went up through the clouds. Fasten your seat belts, called Jim. The dragon flew round the mountains of Scotland Across the wild sea. They saw whales swimming in the water. The dragon flew them round the North Pole and home again. Did you have a good ride? said the man. The best in the world, said Rosie and Jim. One sunny day, Rosie. Jim were chugging along on the good boat ragdoll. What a horrid, noisy place, said Jim. What shall we do, said Rosie. Send Duck, said Jim, for the hermit of Breeden Hill. The old man came down from his hill to see what was the matter. Wouldn't it be nice without all this noise, said Jim. Let me listen, said the hermit. When he heard the cars and the lorries and the buses, he pulled a face. It's horrid, he said. Then a big lorry broke down and stopped the traffic. All the nasty noises disappeared. Is that better? said the hermit. Yes, said Jim. I can hear the music. It was there all the time, said the hermit. The lorry was mended. And the traffic started again. Ooh, noggin, said Rosie. We can hardly hear that nice music now. The hermit pointed out the church. That's the place for us, said Jim. Come on, Rosie. One fine day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll when they came to a great forest. In the middle of the forest, Jim said, I want to go home. Noggin, said Rosie, I don't know the way. We are lost, said Jim. They sat down under a tree. The wind blew and the tree dropped its leaves on them. It's a tickly-wickly tree, said Rosie. Then the birds came and dropped feathers on them. More tickly wicklies, said Jim. We're like the babes in the wood. It's time for the kind woodcutter to come, said Rosie. And take us to his log cabin for bacon and eggs, said Jim. There was no woodcutter, but there was a huge bird. It flew down and picked Jim up in its claws. Help, said Jim. Don't gobble me up. The bird didn't eat Jim. It took him home. Then it came back for Rosie. What a fright it gave Duck. Give it some meat, said Rosie, to say thank you. One fine day, Rosie and were on their way 
when they saw an old crane. It was too rusty to lift anything now. What Rosie and Jim didn't know was that at that very moment, Rust was eating away at their own boat. I'll steer, said Jim. Suddenly, there was a cling, clang, clatter bang, and the tiller came away in Boatman Jim's hand. Help, I've broken it, cried Jim. What are you doing, noggin, said Rosie. They were stuck. Push, said Rosie. Pull, said Jim. But it did no good. We'll never get anywhere now, said Rosie. We'll have to live here on this bit of the canal forever and ever, and we'll never see any new places. Poor Rosie. Poor Jim. They did so love to see new places. Just then, they heard a strange sound. One they'd never heard before. Clip, clop, clippity, clop, clippity, clop. It was a horse with a princess riding on it. I thought, said Jim, that it was princes that came to the rescue. Princesses do it as well, said Rosie, and ordinary girls are just as good at it. The lady on the horse threw them a rope, and the horse pulled them along the canal to a place where they could get the boat mended. And it was soon as good as new. One fine day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along through a magical crystal city where sunlight sparkled off the glass buildings. They saw a giant with a cone-shaped hat. And inside his hat, hot furnaces turned sand from the seaside into beautiful shining glass. The giant could grant wishes. So Jim wished he could go to the seaside to play in the sand. And suddenly he was there with Rosie building a sandcastle boat. Now Rosie and Jim lived on a boat, so they knew they had to have windows to look out of. It was Rosie's turn to make a wish. She wished for some lovely glass hoops. They made perfect porthole windows for the magic sand boat. When they looked out, they saw the seawater rising all round them. But the sand boat was magic. It sailed away and turned into Rosie and Jim's very own boat, the rag doll. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim set sail in their big boat, the rag doll. They came to the place where the boat had been built years before. It was a boatyard. They saw all kinds of boats being made. They saw little boats, middle-sized boats, and great big boats. Then they both made boats of their own and put them in the water. They both set off far away across the sea on a voyage. The winds blew and rocked their boats. The water soaked into Jim's paper boat. Help! I'm sinking! Brave little Rosie sailed up in her foil boat that would never sink. Keep still, I'm coming! She pulled him out of the water and they sailed away together. Then the water rocked their boat gently and they went to sleep. And they dreamed of floating far away across the world. One rainy day, Rosie and Jim were going along in their boat and there was such a pong. Pooh, what's that pong, said Jim. It's your dirty sock, said Rosie. It's jumped out. Quick, catch it. It ran this way and that way. And Rosie and Jim ran after it, but they couldn't catch it. No wonder there's a pong, said Rosie. Our basket's full of pongy, dirty washing. They went to the laundrette 
and pushed all their dirty socks and knickers and things in a washing machine. They went whizzy whizzy round and round and came out clean. But some were much too little and some were much too big and Jim still only had one red sock. Back on the boat, Duck had a new hat. A funny hat. A pongy red hat. My sock, said Jim. He popped it in the sink and washed it clean and hung it out to dry next to his other sock. Back together at last. A nice clean pair of red socks, said Jim. About time, said Rosie. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll right out in the countryside. Jim went up a hill to see what he could see. He went into a little wood. He heard something coming, stamp stamping on the ground. It came round a tree. He saw two curly whirly horns. He saw two shiny eyes. He saw big sharp teeth. Help! shouted Jim. Help the dragon! And he ran for his life all the way down the hill. Rosie put her arms round him and he was safe. Where's this dragon? said Rosie. The dragon came out of the wood. It said, Ba ba. It's not a dragon, said Rosie. It's a sheep. A sheep, said Jim. There were more sheep coming out of the wood. Lots of sheep, said Rosie. They won't eat you. They only eat grass. I thought it was a dragon, said Jim. It's covered in fluffy stuff. Wool, said Rosie. That's what it is. When they went home, Rosie and Jim knitted warm woolly scarves for themselves. A blue one for Rosie, a green one for Jim. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on their boat when they saw a ferry, a little boat going across the water with a rope to pull it. That looks fun, said Jim. I wish we could do that. Perhaps we can. Of course we can, said Rosie. We'll use this ice cream tub and my bowl of wool. All right, said Jim. Let's try. But how will we get it across the river? You see, Noggin, said Rosie. She unrolled the wool. Whoops! What's that, said Rosie. It was an elephant. Hello, elephant. Would you like to play furries and pull our boat across the water, said Rosie. I think she can do it, said Jim. Elephants like water. The elephant sploshed into the river and pulled Rosie and Jim across. We're going back over the bridge, said Jim. That was a lovely ride, said Rosie. Thank you, elephant, said Rosie and Jim. Thank you. Bye-bye. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the old rag doll when they came to a farm. They saw a little bridge over a stream. They were just going to cross it when a great hairy troll jumped out at them. Get off my bridge, he shouted, or I'll gobble you up. Oh, said Rosie, what a noggin. So they went back to the farm. The sheep were being sheared. I know what to do, said Jim. Jim put some wool over him. Ba ba said Jim. Oh, you clever noggin, said Rosie. Is there one to fit me? Rosie wrapped a fleece round herself. Rosie sheep and Jim sheep crept up to the troll's bridge. The troll jumped out. Get off my bridge, shouted the troll. No rag dolls on my bridge. Ba ba said rag doll Rosie sheep. Ba ba said Ragdoll Jim Sheep. Are you real sheep? said the troll. Ba said Rosie and Jim. Then you may cross my bridge, said the troll. Rosie and Jim crossed the troll's bridge. They left the wool for the farmer to collect and went home for their tea. 
one cloudy day. Jim said, look, there's a boat digging water. Oh, noggin, said Rosie, you can't dig water. Well, it must be digging something at the bottom of the water, said Jim. What is at the bottom of the water, said Rosie. I don't know, said Jim. The boat went bump and stopped. We're stuck, said Rosie. On something hard, said Jim. At the bottom of the water, said Rosie. Rosie and Jim jumped ashore. Look, said Jim. At the side of the canal, there was a big round thing. Jim pulled it out. Whoa, noggin, said Rosie. Water came swooshing out. All the water ran out of the canal. There was the rag doll and the dredger sitting on the bottom. The men came and dug rubbish out of the bottom of the canal. That's what's at the bottom, said Jim, and it made our boat stop. We just need some more water now, said Rosie. One cloudy day. Rosie and Jim came to a big house in the countryside. They went in to have a look. It was full of pianos. Ooh, noggin, said Rosie. I wish I could play the piano. Jim had a try. It didn't sound very nice. Then, click, whiz, the piano began to play by itself. What a jolly tune. Would you like the first dance, said Rosie. My pleasure, said Jim. They danced all round the room. Look, said Jim. He has an accordion like ours, said Rosie. Hello, said Jim. I like your music. It's fizzy, said Rosie. The accordion player said nothing. He didn't even smile. He's not friendly, said Jim. Look, said Rosie. He's full of wheels. No wheels in there, said Rosie. More cuddly, said Jim. That's right, said Rosie. Time to go home, said Jim. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the good boat rag doll. When Rosie said, Oh, Jim, I feel fed up. I think I'll change. What will you change into, said Jim. Well, said Rosie, I think I'll change into... A butterfly, said Jim. Change into a butterfly like me, and we'll have beautiful wings. Hmm, said Rosie. It sounds nice, but... Or, said Jim, we could change into... into... Iguanas. Iguanas, said Rosie. Oh, Jim, I don't want to be an iguana. We could lie and sunbathe all day, said Jim, and have flies for our dinner. Yuck, said Rosie. I don't want to be an iguana. I truly don't. I think I'll change into a... a budgie, said Jim. Let's change into budgies. We'd be such lovely colours. And we could fly and play all day long. No, said Rosie. I think I'll just change into a... a new dress. Lovely, said Jim. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim chugging along on the good boat rag doll. Quack, said Duck. What does Duck want, said Rosie? He wants a house, said Jim, his very own house. We'll make him one, said Rosie. Let's make him a big house, said Jim. Duck slept in his new big house that night. The wind blew and Duck shivered. Quack, quack. He doesn't like his house, said Jim. It's too big, said Rosie. Let's make him a little house, said Jim. Duck went into his little house. There was no room to ruffle his feathers. His tail stuck out of one end. His beak stuck out of the other. Quack! Quack! He doesn't like this house, said Rosie. It's too little, said Jim. Let's make him a duck-sized house, said Rosie. They put an old blanket in to keep Duck warm. Quack, said Duck. He likes that house, said Jim. It's just the right size, said Rosie. And Duck snuggled down and went to sleep. One chilly day. Rosie and Jim were going for a walk when they met a dog. 
Poor dog, said Rosie. He has a sore nose. I'm a she, said the dog. Sorry, said Rosie. How did you get a sore nose, said Jim. Bump, went the dog as she walked into a tree. That's how, said Rosie. Ouch, said the dog. Try walking backwards, said Jim. The dog walked backwards. She bumped into Rosie. Ouch, said Rosie. She's not as hard as a tree, said Jim. I know, said Rosie. You need a new hairstyle. You can't see where you're going. We'll give you one, said Jim. Who are you, said the dog. Hairdressers, said Rosie. All right, said the dog. That's better, said the dog. I can see now, but... What, said Rosie. You are not hairdressers, said the dog. You are Rosie and Jim. I know, said Rosie, but... We made you look very nice, said Jim. Thanks, said the dog. One chilly day, Rosie and Jim were going along on the good boat ragdoll when Rosie heard a strange sound. What's that, she said. It's me, said Jim. I'm singing. Oh, said Rosie. It sounds like a tummy ache to me. It's a happy song, said Jim. Listen, said Rosie. What's that? Another happy song, said Jim. It sounds happier than yours, said Rosie. Let's go and see. It's a school, said Jim. Come in, said a lady at the door. Oh, they had a great time in the school. They banged drums, they tinkled triangles, they made sweet sounds on the glockenspiel. And they sang a happy song with the children. Now your song sounds happy, said Rosie. You can join in, said Jim. So she did. One chilly day, Rosie and Jim saw three pigs in a field. Hello, called Jim. I know, said Rosie. You must be the three little pigs. Don't build a straw house, said Jim. The wolf will blow it down, said Rosie. Or one of sticks, said Jim. How do you know, said the pigs. We've read the story, said Jim. Use bricks, said Rosie. But we haven't got any bricks, said the pigs. We'll get you some, said Rosie. Rosie and Jim ran to the brickworks. They borrowed a wheelbarrow and bought some bricks with their pocket money. Then they ran all the way back. You can use our bricks, said Rosie and Jim. They helped the three little pigs to build a house of bricks. When the wolf came, he huffed and he puffed, but he couldn't blow it down. Told you so, said Rosie. One chilly day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the good boat rag doll when they saw a sleepy little baby bat. Hello, said Jim. Do you know you're upside down? I'm not, said the baby bat. It's you that's upside down. Are we, said Jim. And all the world, said Rosie. Yes, and you look very funny. Noggin, said Rosie. I'm hungry, said the baby bat. Would you like some yoghurt, said Rosie. Is it the right way up? Rosie turned her yoghurt upside down. It all spilled on the ground. Messy creature, said the baby bat. Oh dear, I'm so hungry. Rosie found a sandwich in her bag and held it upside down. Bats don't eat sandwiches. What can we do, said Jim. Here comes Mum, said the baby bat. She knows. The bat's mother gave it a good drink of bat's milk as it hung in its tree. That's better, said the baby bat. Time to waken up now. Not for us, said Rosie. It's our bedtime, said Jim. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim went shopping in the market. They came to a stall that was full of hats, all kinds of hats. 
I'd like a hat, said Rosie. Me too, said Jim. They tried a few. Try that one, said Rosie. Jim put a big black hat on his head. Whizzo, fizzo, it was a magic hat. Help, cried Jim. He had grown taller than three houses. Take it off, shouted Rosie. He did. That's better, said Jim. He was his proper size again. Your turn, said Jim. Try this one. Rosie put a big flowery hat on her head. Whizzo, fizzo, it was a magic hat. Rosie grew and grew, as fat as ten pancakes. Take it off, cried Jim. She did. That's better, said Rosie. She was her proper shape again. I don't think it suited you, said Jim. I don't think rag dolls wear hats, said Rosie. And they went home to tea. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were chugging along on the good boat rag doll. And Rosie said, I don't feel very well. I'll take you somewhere to get better, said Jim. Where, said Rosie? I know a place, said Jim. Oh, noggin, shouted Rosie. A garage is no good. I'm not a car. I feel worse now. Oh, dear, said Jim. I know another place. Come on. Oh, you great noodle noggin, gasped Rosie. This is a gymnasium. It's a place for doing exercises, not for getting better. I feel worse than ever. Oh, dear, said Jim. Take her to the hospital, said the man at the gymnasium. The ambulance came. At the hospital, the nurse put Rosie in a lovely bed with a nice cup of tea. I feel better already, said Rosie. The doctor came with her medicine. The children came to play with her. I feel well now, said Rosie. Great, said Jim. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were on the old rag doll. Where is Rosie, said Jim. He heard a faint voice. Yoo-hoo, Jim. Jim looked at the picture painted on the boat. It's a play pretend game, said Jim. He closed his eyes and pretended he was in the picture. And bingo, wingo, there he was. Rosie looked down. Come on, Noggin, get on with rescuing me, she said. The door's locked, said Jim. Oh, Noggin, said Rosie, you'll have to climb up then. But Jim couldn't climb up. Hang on, said Rosie, I'll let down my hair. Rosie let her hair down for Jim to climb up, but Jim could not reach it. You're not much use as a rescuing prince, said Rosie. In a moment, the door opened. And out came Rosie. You had the key all the time, said Jim. Noggin, said Rosie. Of course I did. I just wanted to be rescued, that's all. Time for home, said Jim. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were going along on the good boat ragdoll when they came to a forest. Let's go for a walk, said Jim. They met a man with an axe. He was chopping a tree down. Stop, shouted Jim. You'll hurt it. Never fear, said the man. When I cut down an old tree, I always plant a new one. That's right, Noggin, said Rosie. Would you like to see my furniture tree, said the man. Furniture, said Rosie. That's tables and chairs and beds, said the man. There it is. Rosie and Jim climbed into the furniture tree and tried to go to sleep on a branch. Jim sat on a bough. Noodle, said Rosie, I'll never sleep here. But people have to make it into furniture, said the man. The tree makes the wood. So that's where wood comes from, said Jim. Well, I never, said Rosie. One cloudy day. Rosie and Jim met a sheepdog. Hello, they said. Who are you? I'm a sheepdog, said the dog. Sheepdogs are not supposed to look like sheep, said Rosie. They just round sheep up, said Jim. I'm a different kind, said the dog. I round rag dolls up. We don't want to be rounded up noodles, said Rosie. You don't get to choose, said the dog. 
and he began rounding up Rosie and Jim. He rounded them up a hill and through a stream. He rounded them through some prickly bushes and some sticky mud. Stop, shouted Rosie. Nearly finished, said the dog. Through a hedge and over a stile, and there was the rag doll. That's it, said the dog. That's what, noggin, said Rosie. Finished, said the dog. Rounding up always finishes at home, especially with rag dolls. What about ducks, said Jim. But the dog had gone. Looking for something else to round up, I suppose, said Jim. He's got it all wrong, said Rosie. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were going along on the good boat rag doll when Rosie said, I'm thirsty. Have a drink of water, said Jim. The tap's gone to sleep, said Rosie. Let's wish, said Jim. Let's wish for the water wizard to send us some water. Lots of water, said Rosie. So they wished. Water wizard in the sky, send some water, please do try. There was a whoosh, and water came pouring out of the sky. Too much, shouted Rosie. We are soaked, wailed Jim. And still thirsty, said Rosie. What a noggin. They came to a water pipe. Fill her up, said Rosie. That's better, said Jim. But it all comes out of the sky, said Rosie. Then they washed their clothes in water, and they washed themselves in water, and they had a good drink of water. It's great stuff, said Jim, water. But not all at once, said Rosie. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim went for a walk among the woods and fields. What's that, said Rosie. It's a unicorn, said Jim. A uni what, said Rosie? A unicorn, said Jim. A horse with a long horn. I read about one in a book, said Jim. It's magic. Ooh, said Rosie. I love magic things. Let's take it to our boat and give it a yoghurt for its tea. Only girls can catch a unicorn, said Jim. How? With a grass rope, said Jim. So Rosie and Jim gathered some long stalks of grass they twisted and twined them until they had made a grass rope. Rosie crept up to the unicorn and put the rope gently in a loop over its head. It trotted after her, back to the rag doll, just as though it had known her for years. The unicorn had a toffee yogurt. It loved it. Then the grass rope just fell to pieces in Rosie's hand. Never saw the unicorn again. One sunny day. Rosie and Jim were going along on the rag doll when Rosie said, Look! Prize for the best decorated boat, said Jim. Let's have a go, said Rosie. What can we do? We could, said Jim, make our boat into a flying boat. I'm not so sure, said Rosie. Let's try something else, said Jim. We could, said Rosie, turn the rag doll into a submarine. That would be fun. I'm not so sure, said Jim. Let's try something else, said Rosie. We could, said Jim, turn the rag doll into a hoverboat. Noggin, shouted Rosie. It might give the animals a fright, said Jim. Let's just enter it as Rosie and Jim's boat, said Rosie. Good idea, said Jim. We've won, said Rosie. Great, said Jim. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were going for a walk when they saw a man making something. It's a big basket, said Rosie. A giant's basket, said Jim. A coracle, said the man. He put the coracle in the water and paddled away. Big for a basket, said Jim, but little for a boat. Noggin, said Rosie. Further on, they saw something else. Look, a basket in a tree, said Rosie. A boat in a tree, said Jim. A big bird flew out of it. 
It's a bird's nest, said Jim. Noggin, said Rosie. Jim found something else. That's a funny boat. It has holes in it, Jim thought. Perhaps it's a nest or a basket. It's a colander, said Rosie. It's for cleaning vegetables. Oh, said Jim. Time for tea. One cloudy day. Rosie and Jim were going along on the good boat ragdoll when some birds flew over them. Oh, I do wish we could be birds, said Rosie, and fly up in the sky. Who did that, said Rosie? It was a wish, said Jim. They don't always come true, said Rosie. They swooped and flew over the trees and the river. Far below, they could see the rag doll. I'm hungry, said Jim. I wonder when we stop for dinner, said Rosie. Oop, said Jim. What was that, said Rosie? A fly, said Jim. A fly? I swallowed one, said Jim. Yuck, said Rosie. What about dinner? That was dinner, said Jim. What? That's what the other birds are eating, said Jim. I can smell something nice, said Rosie. Dinner on the rag doll, said Jim. Egg and chips. I want to be a rag doll again, said Rosie. And whiz, fizz, they were rag dolls. That's better, said Rosie. Now for dinner. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim came to some curly-whirly gates. I wonder who lives there, said Rosie. Let's go and see, said Jim. But the curly-whirly gates would not open. The sun came out and made everything hot. The curly-whirly gates began to uncurl. They're made of toffee, said Jim. Yum, yummy, said Rosie. They ate the toffee until there was a hole in the gates and they went into the garden. They came to a curly-whirly bridge over deep water. We can't walk on that, said Jim. It'll melt and drop us in the water. Oh, noggin, said Rosie. I want to see that house. A man came out of the house with a big hammer. Hello, he said. I'm the blacksmith. Do you want to walk on my bridge? We don't want to fall in the water, noggin, said Rosie. My bridge is an iron bridge, said the blacksmith. It won't melt in the sun. Rosie and Jim walked across the bridge. He was right, said Rosie. But you can't eat it, said Jim. Gobbin, said Rosie. One chilly day. Rosie and Jim were in the kitchen of the good boat rag doll when Rosie said, let's make a jelly. All right, said Jim. Let's make a jelly cat, said Rosie. The jelly cat jumped out of the mould and said, meow. It's alive, said Jim. Once a friend said Rosie. They made another jelly cat. The jelly cat said, Meow, meow. They want something to play with, said Jim. They made two jelly mice. The jelly cats chased the jelly mice. They want somewhere to play, said Rosie. So Rosie and Jim made jelly trees and jelly grass and jelly fields. The jelly cats and the jelly mice chased each other faster and faster. They got hotter and hotter. At last, they all melted away. All that was left was a jelly puddle. Rosie and Jim brought their plates. They scooped up some jelly and had a feast. Mmm, lovely, said Jim. Mmm, lovely, said Rosie. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim went for a walk. I'm tired, said Jim. We've walked too far, said Rosie. But we must go back to the rag doll, said Jim, or we'll have nowhere to sleep tonight. It's too far, said Rosie. My legs won't go. A girl trotted by on a brown pony. That's a good idea, said Rosie. They saw a horse in a field. Will you give us a ride home, said Rosie and Jim. Yes, said the horse, if you'll bring me some oats for my dinner. Rosie went to find some oats for the horse's dinner. I had to walk miles, said Rosie. And please bring me a good drink of water, said the horse. Jim went to find some water for the horse. 
I never knew that water was so heavy, said Jim. The horse ate its oats and drank its water. Lovely, it said. Jump on and we'll trot home. It's better than walking, said Rosie. It's nice to be home, said Jim. One cloudy day, Rosie and Jim were going along on the good boat ragdoll when they saw a granny on a motorbike. Are you coming to the show, said the granny. Oh, yes, said Rosie and Jim. Race you there, said the granny. Hey, that's not fair, said Jim. Wait for us, cried Rosie. They hurried along to the show. Help, shouted Jim, there's a lion. It's all right, said the granny. It's only playing pretend, look. She put her head inside the lion's mouth. The lion said, Brrr. You're supposed to say, Roar, said Rosie. Roar. Take no notice, said the granny. He'll never hurt anyone. Let's have lunch. What is for lunch, said Jim. Omelette, said Granny, if the lion hasn't eaten it. No one can eat it, said Jim. The omelette's playing pretend as well, said Rosie. Let's go back to the rag doll, said Jim, for beans on toast. Good idea, said Rosie, if they're not playing pretend. Um. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim met a hen. Said the hen. Can we help? Said Rosie. I'm laying, said the hen. The table for tea, said Jim. We're good at that, said Rosie. Come on, Jim. Rosie and Jim whizzed about. They brought a cloth, knives, forks, spoons, plates, cups, and salt. Ready, said Rosie. No, said the hen. I'm not laying the table for tea. I'm laying an egg. How do you do that, said Jim. Easy, said the hen. Just watch. Here it comes. The egg popped out of the hen. She kept it warm. They waited to see. It went tap, tap. A chicken came out of it. Lovely, said Rosie. The chicken soon fluffed up its feathers and said it was hungry. Time for tea, said Jim. Cheese sandwiches, said Rosie. And tomatoes, said Jim. My chick likes to peck corn in the grass, said the hen. Took in, said Rosie. Rex. One cloudy day, Rosie was reading a story to Jim. That's magic, said Jim. What, said Rosie? Making all those squiggly wiggly things into a story, said Jim. Oh, you can do it, said Rosie. Where, said Jim? Yes, said Rosie. A wizard's castle, said Jim. Somewhere easier to find, said Rosie. Hmm, said Jim. What about a shop? A shop full of books. Hmm, nice pictures, said Jim. But I haven't got enough money to buy a book today. Never mind, said Rosie. Where else can we go, said Jim. Guess, said Rosie. I give in, said Jim. A library, said Rosie. Do you need any money, said Jim? No, said Rosie. I found a good book, said Jim. Good, said Rosie. I'll show you how to read it. Great, said Jim. One sunny day, Rosie and Jim were going for a walk. Ouch, said Jim. What's wrong, said Rosie. My foot hurts, said Jim. You must have a stone in your shoe, said Rosie. It feels like a mountain, said Jim, or an elephant. Let's see, said Rosie. It is an elephant, said Jim. What are you doing in my shoe? I didn't know I was in your shoe, said the elephant. It's a very small elephant, said Rosie. It's growing bigger and bigger, said Jim. We'll take it for a walk, said Rosie. But not inside my shoe, said Jim. The elephant soon said, Ouch! What's wrong, said Rosie? My foot hurts, said the elephant. Well, said Rosie, you can't have a stone in your shoe. Elephants don't wear shoes. That's not fair, said the elephant. I want some shoes. 
fixed the stones on the path, said Jim. We'll take her to the shoe shop, said Rosie. At the shoe shop, Rosie and Jim bought a pair of elephant shoes. I want to wear them, said Jim. You'll have to take turns, said Rosie. So they did. 